All right, so the first step in your mail merge is determining what you actually want to bring together. And so in order to begin this procedure, you go up to the word mailings and you select start mail merge. And it's within this drop down menu that you determine what you actually want to create new. Do you want to create a new letter, a new email message, an envelope, or labels? You can also create a brand new directory as well. What we're going to do for the purpose of this presentation is create brand new labels. So I select labels. Gives you lots of different options, but because we've already used this one already, we are going to select eco-friendly name badges. <coughs> Excuse me, and we're going to also select every U.S. letter. We don't have to worry about the default tray because that will really change depending on the office that you're in. Once you've done that, you click on OK. You'll see what appears is the handle for a table, but we don't have any content quite yet. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to determine the data source. So we have the format. Now find the content. So up here in the Start Mail Merge group, we select recipients and we have to decide two things. Do we have to create a brand new list or do we use an existing list that we currently have? For the sake of time, we're going to use an existing list that we currently have. So I just need to select Use Existing List and then I have to look for it. And I happen to have one in my folder and it's entitled Data Source for Mail Merge. So I have a couple of choices here. I know that this is my contact list for these labels that I'm going to use, and so I'll click on Contacts. You can see that the icon beside it has a different icon that's normally associated with Word products. It has a key beside it, and the reason why is because this is the icon that rep represents the program Microsoft Access. So it's a database program, but you could use anything here in terms of content. You could use, again, a table. You could use an Excel spreadsheet. You could use even contacts from your email list but for the purpose of this we're going to use the database. Once we've selected the database we can open it. Now nothing really happens here except these words next record happen and, and what we want to do now is we want to customize these records. So what we have to decide is what do we want to put on these labels. So uh, well first of all we know we want a name of some kind so here in the write and insert fields group I'm going to select first name and we also want a last name and so the next thing we'll do is we'll put in a last name as well. Now you have to be careful that when you put in your first and last name, name if you don't put a space between that the last name will butt up against the end of that first name. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a space between the two. So what else do we want in here? Well if it is some kind of conference or if we're making labels for some kind of meet and greet we'll probably want to put where they're from so that at least there is some context and so what we'll likely do is we'll probably throw in the company name where they're from that is and um, we'll put in the state as well now sometimes you want these things on different lines and so what we'll do is we'll just select state and put the cursor right in front and then place that before so the next step is making sure that the customization that I put in the first label is updated for all the labels on the page. In order to do that, I have to go back up to Write and Insert Fields and I click on Update Labels. Now let's say for instance, well in fact I don't really want the company name. I'm actually going to take out the company name because I really just want their first last name. If I make any change to the very first label, what do I also have to ensure is that I also make changes to the rest of the labels. So I'm just going to make sure that that's formatted exactly the way I want it. And I don't actually want underline. I think I'll keep them without any underlines. So what I have now is no underlines, first and last name, and I have the state. Well, you can see now that's different from all the other labels. So what do I have to do? I have to go back and I have to update labels. What it does is it creates a different uh, update for each one of these. Now you'll also notice that it appears that I have this word next record, next record, next record. Will that show up in my label? No. What it indicates to you is that it is recording a new field onto the label section of your page. So it's just indicating that it recognizes that there's more than one record, as in field that you put in that database, table, email contact, or Excel spreadsheet, and it's applying it to a new area of your Word document. The last thing that you can do before you start making any more modifications is just preview your results. 
That's found in the preview results group. Just click on preview results and you can see if you need to make any changes. Looks good. We have the first and last name and we have where they're from. The next video is going to show you how we can now customize labels, letters, or any other formats so that we're just printing specific information and not having to print the entire contact list. So I'll deselect preview results and please move on to the next video to learn how to filter and sort.